Hey everybody, welcome back. The build videos continue. This is part four in the video series, but it would be the second part of stuff in the PCB. So we're just gonna kinda keep moving here because you're probably binging these as we speak. Um, we're gonna get into a little bit bigger stuff on the board, excluding our power regulation section. So we're gonna be talking about uh, capacitors and we're gonna be dumping on like IO stuff, like XLR connectors and all that stuff as well as stuff like JST headers uh, and uh, the, you know, transformers. So the input and the output transformer. Uh, yeah, sorry, input, output. But anyway, there's gonna be a lot of bigger stuff, uh, a lot of like, you know, one-off things. So we'll be putting all that stuff together, stuff on the board with the rest of this stuff, as well as getting this built. We'll be doing the subboard for the uh, switch system for the uh, ratio, as well as the attack and release PCB. We're gonna get the trim pots on here as well. So I'm gonna jump in it, jump a time lapse, but I'll stop periodically and kind of go over some pieces. Um, I guess <clears throat> one thing before we get rolling, we'll go ahead and pull out the capacitors. Make sure you got your instructions up. My iPad's back there rolling. So this will be the end of, in our case, the Rev F component box. So, couple different styles of capacitors here. We have polarized film and ceramic capacitors. I'm going to start with the polarized capacitors. Actually, I'm a big fat liar. I'm going to start with the film capacitors. Some smaller ones like that. These are not polarized. The ceramic ones on here are not polarized either. Only the ones that say polarized in this case. But these are like... Uh, you know, standard, more standard capacitors, things that you'd see on like a motherboard, stuff like that. These are the ones that are gonna be a little more specific. And remember in this whole thing, in this whole build, um, I shouldn't say remember, but maybe if you're not aware, the capacitors are what really affects, you know, the, the sonic signature more than anything. If we had to pick a singular component to like source out. So for example, there's a modification that's called an orange drop mod. And the orange drop is a special kind of capacitor. It's got a little more mojo adds a little more hair inside the circuit. In our case, we chose Rev Fs, or I chose Rev Fs because I want them to be clean and punchy. I'm gonna be using them in a mix sense more. Um, I got, but if I was tracking a ton of vocals, I was doing a vocal studio and I was doing like a, a Rev A build, maybe my Rev A, I'm gonna put an orange drop in there because it's got a little bit more oomph. And so that's gonna give my vocal more personality, things like that. Um, remember, it's easy to get sterility. You know, and that's something in the box that we kind of sit. The box is a sterile environment. The, you know, software is a is a sterile environment. This is where we're actually creating uh, that non mathematical, you know, mojo. So anyway, f philosophy aside, let's jump into the build. We're going to start with the capacitors. On the polarized capacitors, you got to pay attention. Make sure you orient them the right way. If you put them in the wrong way, you could have bad news bears on your stuff. So when you get to these guys, pay attention. There's a little plus, like for example, C15 here, you can see a plus and a minus. So make sure you're orienting the cathode and the anode properly. I'll probably drop in when I get to those. But anyway, let's get started with these capacitors, get this stuff going, and then we'll move on. So, all right guys, we're gonna jump a time lapse. Quick drop in here. Uh, all right, so we've got the ceramic and the film capacitors already in place, the little box film capacitors here and the ceramic capacitors. None of those are polarized, okay? So any which way. I did it to where the text on the uh, cap-faced 
a direction. So if it was this way, they faced up. If it was this way, they faced that way. I don't know. Just pick a pick a direction and stick with it. Pick and stick. All right. So now we're gonna jump into polarized capacitors. So these have a marking. It says, hey, one side's positive, one side's negative. And if you don't pay attention, you're gonna mess it up. All right. So with electrolytic capacitors, these little round guys, there's two leads. The longer lead is the positive one, the one that matches up with the plus. So I may be right, this actually might be the C15 capacitor. I'm not gonna solder it now, but just to show you, on the silk screen, the plus is on this side, the minus is on this side. So my longer lead would go through the silk screen, go through the board there, shorter lead. And you can squeak it on down in there, right? And then bend your lead and solder and go from there. Um, yeah, so. Again, super, super important. Don't put them in backwards, okay? That's when things fail and they fail. These are the things that fail spectacularly. Like when we did our power supply, we were, you know, back up. Because if these things go, that's going to be the big deal. So anyway, I'm going to go through and organize my caps and get them. You know, I have little bins here, so I kind of go in order as I organize them. You've probably seen. And yeah, and then start getting them in the board. We've got all the polarized capacitors done. Now we need to do something a little bit special. We have some test points in front of the XLR connectors where they go on the board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some trimmed leads. By now you see I got a big pile of trim leads over here. I got a couple thicker ones that came off some other things. I'm gonna trim them a little bit shorter. I'm gonna pop them in here. And I'm gonna solder just posts in place. These are just testing posts. Uh, when we're calibrating this thing, we gotta crank the knobs until we reach a certain voltage. So we have to have a way to test across that. So that will be here on these test points. Um, then after that, we're gonna be jumping to like bigger parts. So XLR connectors, transformers, JST headers, uh, and then we're going to get into the switch system and the other potentiometers and stuff like that that are on the board. So we'll be jumping around with big stuff. Um, probably stop again on this transformer to show you guys how to like twist wires and provide a little extra step of magnetic rejection for, for good measure to keep your circuit quiet. But anyway, I'm going to kind of press on here so you'll see me making little test posts out of these leads here.
Okay guys, so we're now we're at the output transformer. Input transformers in, looks good on the board. Make sure we lined up our black dot to the dot on the silk screen. Uh, all our JST headers are in, everything's tight. I want stuff tight and flush to the board the whole time. You see me like propping stuff up and being gentle as to get stuff to where it needs to go. All right, so special thing about the output transformer. This thing, these metal plates that are running around the outside have are air gapped. So that means they have space in between in order to provide for the function of this transformer. That means don't over tighten them. Just tighten them up enough so it stays on the board. That's it. You're not playing football with this thing. It shouldn't be bouncing around in the car or something like that. So it doesn't have to be crazy tight. After you get that secured in, which I will do in a minute, on the back side of the board, you see orange, brown, yellow, red color codes for these wires. These wires, in order to help your build stay nice and quiet and keep the interference down to the minimum, need to be twisted, or it will, I shouldn't say need to be, but it helps to twist them before they contact the board, like this. Uh, twisting them and keeping them short will keep the magnetic rejection up, meaning that it keeps the signal in this transformer as clean as possible. Transformers, potentiometers, things like that, these are the places that noise is generated. The cleaner the build of these things and the cleaner the installation, the, quiet your, the quieter your circuit's going to be. This is analog, and of course we want umph and fuzz and stuff like that, but if we can get it clean and quiet here, we can get all the beef with out all the <laughs> beef fat. Anyway, all right, so... Uh, I'm going to attach this thing to the board gently, uh, twist up these wires, and then we're going to get into the potentiometers here, as well as the ratio switch, which will get going on this guy right here. So I think that's it. I'll jump back to the time lapse, and we'll get this guy going. So if you've stuck with me so far, that's it. All the soldering is done. We have our ratio switch here, our attack and release PCB, our lamp PCB, everything fully assembled, and the main PCB. Our lovely twisted pairs underneath, short, tight. So hopefully this circuit will be nice and clean. Uh, as well as there's a small trim adjust, or uh, it's basically it's the trim for the meter to get the meter to zero. It needs to go on the front as well, or on the bottom of this PCB. I wait to do it last because it just gets in the way otherwise, and it's small, I feel like I'm gonna break it. Uh, yeah, making sure these guys are straight and flush against the board so they stick through fine in the front face plate. So yeah, so that's the end of this one. Next video, we're gonna put it together, all the assembly stuff, and do the calibration of it to make sure that our circuit's working properly. And then that's it, guys. We put it in the rack, and, and here we go. Uh, one other thing I'll be doing next video as well is assembling the uh, active link. I'll start by assembling the active link, and then we'll put the rest of this guy together. So, all right, until then, cheers.